So now we're going to have a look at phase F migration planning. Um, phase F uh, is much more a case of uh, F for finalized because we're finalizing what we started in phase E. We're finalizing what we started in uh, previous phases. And a lot of the activities in phase F would typically be done in conjunction with the activities of phase E, particularly activities in phase F relating to planning. Objectives, finalize the architecture roadmap and the supporting implementation migration plan. Ensure that the uh, plan is coordinated with the enterprise's approach to managing and implementing change uh, in, the, in the enterprise's overall change portfolio. And ensure that the business value and cost of work packages and transition architectures understood by key stakeholders. Focus is the creation of the implementation and migration plan in cooperation with the project and portfolio managers. Activities include the dependencies, costs and benefits of the various migration projects within the context of the enterprise's other activities. So it's very much a reminder that what we're doing is very rarely uh, standalone and that it needs to be uh, integrated with the other um, projects and programs that may well be uh, uh, on the go or being planned within the organization. Inputs into phase F, all the usual suspects, including uh, the architecture roadmap and the implementation migration plan. And despite the fact it just says architecture roadmap, that is also an outline uh, along with the implementation migration plan. So they're with the major outputs from uh, phase E. But other than that, they are the, uh, the usual bunch of suspects, so to speak, uh, that we've seen as we've been going around uh, uh, all the, uh, the phases. Um, with the request for architecture work still being seen as an input into phase F as it was in phase E and D and C and B and A. Um, although into phase A it was much more of an active input, whereas here, here and in previous phases uh, it's probably just a referential uh, input. There are seven steps that officially make up uh, phase F. Seven steps. Um, the first step uh, is to confirm the management framework interactions for the implementation and migration plan. Uh, co coordinate the implementation migration plan with the management frameworks in use within the organization. Uh, one would say that this is very much an activity that we've done in conjunction uh, with uh, phase uh, E. Um, uh, given the fact that in phase E we create an initial version of the plan and then we're sort of finalizing it here. Uh, and so these considerations would need to um, have been looked at uh, when we were doing the initial planning as well. Um, but again, this is this this whole idea that, that uh, phases E and F would typically be done together as a, as a single phase as such. So we need to be looking at uh, making sure the plan is um, compatible with the, uh, the other frameworks. Output of this step may well be that the implementation migration plan is part of a different plan produced by another framework. So quite often will be uh, part of some sort of uh, uh, program or, or whatever. Step two, assign a business value to each work package. Mm, we are assigning business value to projects and I guess at the strategic level, which is where we would be more likely to do this, each of those projects could be a work package within the, um, the strategic uh, roadmap. Uh, but we are actually assigning value to um, projects as opposed to work, work packages per se. Uh, and you typically wouldn't use this technique you know, down at the capability architecture level because there would be uh, lots of other factors that would uh, typically you know, come and sort of negate this. So this is talking about using the business value uh, assessment technique. And this is another of the migration planning techniques. Business value assessment technique um, allows us to uh, um, look at the relative uh, value and risk of our major projects and then potentially use that information to determine uh, which project we're going to go and do uh, first. Um, and it involves creating a, a grid or a matrix uh, with risk uh, along one axis and value up the other axis. And then we plot the uh, projects accordingly. 
and that potentially then gives us an idea of the uh, the sequence and implementation. But it's just important. It's just one technique that we could use to determine the sequence. It's not the only one. And factors such as uh, dependencies uh, and others will often um, override the uh, uh, business value assessment technique. But if you are going to be using the technique, it would be very typically uh, used up at a strategic level, uh, if at all. Value index should include criteria such as compliance and principles, financial contribution, strategic alignment, and competitive position. Risk index should include criteria such as size and complexity, technology, uh, organizational capacity, and impact of failure. Uh, each criteria should be assigned an individual weight. And it could potentially look like this. Uh, this is their example in the TOGAF uh, standard PDF. Uh, and although it is very colorful, uh, the uh, uh, the um, rag status that we've got there on the right hand side um, doesn't really work in my view in at this sort of level because we typically wouldn't know um, at, a, at an advanced strategic planning level as to whether a project's going to be in trouble or at risk or on target it's far too early in the process uh, so quite why they decided to include it here don't really know uh, unfortunately they don't explain in the tone gas standard why they've got the uh, the rag status there um, in fact, they don't explain a lot about this particular, it's just literally this diagram and that's it. Um, and it doesn't tell you anything about what the projects are. We don't know if there's any dependencies. We don't even know, for example, whether A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is the order that they're going to do the projects in. Um, so uh, it could have been a bit more informative uh, if they had uh, um, tried. They also don't tell you, you know, it says that the project size is indicated by the size of the circle. They don't tell you how to work out the size of the circle. I know typically uh, it's a vector of cost and time scale, but they don't even put that in there. At the end of the day, it's not really a major problem. It's just an example of, of what one might look like. Uh, they're not going to give you something like this and get you to uh, you know, interpret it uh, in the exam or, or anything like that, because that would require uh, specialist knowledge. Yeah, or as is often the case, subjective interpretation. Um, the main thing you need to know about the business value assessment technique is that if you get a certified question um, and you've worked out from the question scenario that you're in and around phases of ENF and risk is cited as a major concern, uh, then the business value assessment technique could be part of the answer uh, as it is uh, very much uh, looking at risk as well as the value. Um, not that you know that necessarily from the uh, the title of the uh, the technique, of course. Step three: estimate the resource requirements, project timings, and availability and delivery vehicle. This again is another activity where you look at this and think, we have probably been doing this along with uh, phase E activities. Uh, given that um, the decision in phase E to choose one solution versus another uh, is often based on considerations such as how much is it going to cost to, to create the capability, how much is it going to cost to run and sustain the capability. Um, so again, these are activities that we've more likely been doing uh, in parallel or in conjunction with uh, phase E. Step four, another technique to potentially um, determine the uh, sequence of implementation. So prioritize the migration projects through the conduct of a cost benefit assessment and risk validation. Uh, prioritize the projects by ascertaining their business value against the cost of delivering them. Determine the net benefit of all of the solution building blocks delivered by the projects. Verify that the risks have been effectively mitigated and factored in. And gain the requisite consensus to create a prioritized list of projects that will provide the basis for resource allocation. Now these steps, these techniques, could well have an impact on the um, transition architectures. Uh, so step five talks about conf confirming the architecture roadmap and updating the architecture definition document. Uh, and it says in the, the uh, second major bullet point, if the implementation approach has shifted as a result of confirming the implementation increments, update the architecture definition document. So basically if we've identified you know, different transition architectures uh, as a result of the activities, then we would need to update the uh, architecture definition document accordingly. It also says that uh, something we might want to consider um, um, creating or maybe using is a transition architecture state evolution table. This is another uh, artifact 
uh, that's part of their uh, migration planning uh, techniques. So it can be used to show the proposed state of the domain architectures. Before we can have an architecture state evolution table, we need to uh, create potentially an architecture definition increments table uh, because that's the, the thing that we could use to actually define the transition architectures and then having defined them, feed that information forward, if you like, into uh, the transition architecture state evolution table where we could then show the state of the uh, architectures at those transition architecture points. So the architecture definition increments table allows the architect to plan a series of transition architectures outlining the status uh, of the enterprise architectures at specified times, created in phase F, consists of listing the projects and then assigning their incremental deliverables across the transition architectures. And it could potentially look like that. So it's a bit sort of chicken and egg, catch-22 sort of situation where um, you define the transition architectures and then you say what the uh, deliverables are going to be at the transition architecture points uh, but also you are defining the transition architecture points often based on the completion of a certain uh, amount of work and certain key deliverables being delivered so it's a it's, it's a sort of bit of both in some respects um, as a, a planning tool it, it's more likely certainly down at the capability architecture level to be created by the planning framework because it's very much looking at the deliverables from the various projects uh, and then saying okay that's a good point at which we will then have a transition architecture we said that we identify the transition architectures in the uh, architecture definition increments table and then we reflect those in the architecture state evolution table allows the architecture to show the proposed state of the uh, architectures at various levels and then it says using the technical reference model not really nowadays um, we wouldn't be using the TRM at all, uh, the technical reference model. Um, the open group themselves have said that it's it's now sort of uh, historical more than anything else. Um, so we could probably ignore that part of this. Um, this is part of the implementation migration plan uh, itself, uh, showing the proposed state of the architectures as they evolve, uh, drawn up in phase F, listing transition architectures and proposed transformations. Uh, all solution building blocks should be described with respect to their delivery and impact on services. And it could look a bit like that. Again, you would, you know, if you're going to create something like this nowadays, you wouldn't sort of put in the technical reference model bit um, uh, because, um, again, it's, it's, it's historical. It's been removed from the TOGAF standard itself. But it could potentially look like that. Step six generate the implementation and migration plan i wouldn't have used the word generate here i would have sort of said finalize would have been maybe better because we started creating it in phase e and we're finalizing it in phase uh, f uh, integrate all of the projects and activities as well as dependencies and impact of change into a project plan mm, i wouldn't necessarily have said their uh, uh, project plan uh, i think it would have been better if it had said instead into the uh, implementation migration plan because the implementation migration plan is, is quite often a, a program of works uh, and that would then fit better with the second bullet point which says any transition architectures will act as portfolio milestones and also you then got at the bottom there project plans may be included with the implementation migration plan so that would make more sense if you had your implementation migration plan as a sort of program of, of uh, activities and then within that you could have the individual projects step seven complete the architecture development cycle and document lessons learned this step transitions governance from the development of the architecture to the realization and lessons learned during the development of the architecture should be documented and captured by the appropriate governance process in phase h so any lessons that we might have learned from doing our architecture work uh, will feed forward to uh, to phase h where hopefully they can use that information to uh, uh, better manage projects uh, in the uh, in the future outputs of phase f implementation migration plan uh, finalized, even though it says detailed here, it may not be that detailed. Finalized architecture definition document, finalized transition documents, finalized architecture uh, requirement specification document, finalized architecture roadmap, 
I think you get the idea that uh, everything pretty much is uh, finalized before we either go into implementation in phase G or we go back round to, uh, to phase A if we're creating our architecture landscape. So that request for uh, architecture work, uh, if any, um, and it's the sort of if any bit, um, which is important, uh, would only apply if we were going to go back round from phase F to, uh, to phase A. Implementation governance model change requests, these are all potential outputs, although change requests is a, is a curious one in some respects because you could have change requests from, from, from any phase. It doesn't just have to be out of phase F. Summary, phase F addresses migration planning, how to move from the baseline to the target. It includes creating pretty much to finalize everything. And at completion of this phase, the preparation for implementation has been completed. That's the summary of the phase uh, as per the M181 uh, document that you can get from the Open Group site, uh, which is the uh, ADM reference cards version 9.2. Um, so it just gives you a summary of the uh, the objectives, the steps, the inputs, and the outputs. Test yourself question. When preparing the detailed migration plan in phase F, which of the following would not be an action? So which of these is not an action within phase F? A, risk assessment. Uh, B, prioritize uh, uh, project priorities. C, uh, availability of resources. D, cost benefit assessment. Or E, choice of target platform. And hopefully you chose uh, answer E, choice of target platform. Uh, that would be, uh, have been done in phase uh, E, uh, whereas all the other uh, activities there uh, could be done in phase F.